One thing, it was dark as a crow's wing. There were snakes everywhere. I'm talking about thousands of snakes. And someone from the network is watching and saying to himself, this young man is pretty good. In this case, I got the break. Channel 11, KHOU Television, in 1960 when I came to work there, their ratings were so poor that we were at least the fifth or sixth station in a three-station market. And I was brought in to be the news director, which basically meant I was the director of myself because we had no other full-time employees. But the station was under new ownership uh, by a New York outfit called Whitney Communications, and they were determined to make the station competitive. At the one and a half year mark, we had begun to make real progress. We were moving up in the ratings. We were getting a reputation for jumping all over breaking news. September of 1961, I noticed because I've spent most of my life being interested in hurricanes, that a, a big hurricane was crossing the Yucatan Peninsula and going to get out into the Gulf of Mexico. The hurricane's name was Carla. It wasn't a big story at the time, but I called on you know, my experience and my interest in hurricanes. I had been following it closely, but when it got back into the Gulf of Mexico and began to reform, I started paying a lot of attention to it. I was born in Wharton, Texas, which is on the Texas coast, right in the heart of hurricane country. I grew up with the history, the mystery, and the lore of hurricanes. My grandmother, Paige, she once told me, she said, Dan, being in the middle of a hurricane is about as close as you will get to God. Carla, when it reformed in the Gulf of Mexico, it fairly quickly became a, a much bigger and much fiercer hurricane than it had been before. And by my amateur plotting, I had it coming in at or near Galveston Island. At the television station, I went to the program director, a man named Cal Jones. He knew from nothing about hurricanes. He'd never seen a hurricane. He'd never gone through a hurricane. He didn't know zip all about hurricanes. But I went to him and tried to explain, Cal, this hurricane is unusually large. It's unusually fierce. I think it may go in at or near Galveston Island, which is only 50 miles from Houston. And if this thing goes where I think it's going to go, and I'm just sort of guessing, this is going to be big breaking news. I also knew that in Galveston, the Weather Bureau had established a radar, a new radar. But radar was not yet widely used in weather predictions. I explained this to Cal. I might as well have been speaking Swahili or High Norse, but he grasped the potential importance of it. So he said, well, what would be the plan? I said, well, would the plan be, we will go to Galveston, we will set up in the Weather Bureau at Galveston, on Galveston Island, where Cal, they have this new radar. Galveston Island is gonna get marooned. At that time, there was only one way in and one way off of this island. If we're going to go, we gotta go now. He was reluctant, but he knew my news instincts were at least reasonably good. I took myself and a cameraman to Galveston Island. We got to Galveston Island, and the National Weather Service had sent down a man from uh, Washington, a man named Vaughn Rockney. Rockney was at the Weather Bureau when I got there. He'd just arrived. Rockney explained to me how really big the hurricane was, how really fierce it was, and I looked at the radar and the picture was mesmerizing. I had the idea, Rockney was a little reluctant about it, I said, well, look, in order, on the radar, you do get a sense of how big and dangerous it is, but you don't get a sense of proportion with the Texas landmass for which it's headed. So let's take a scale map of Texas on a transparent piece of uh, plastic and put it over the radar picture, superimpose it over the radar picture where you will see an outline of the Texas coast, an outline of a bunch of Texas, and the radar's picture of the hurricane. So we put that up, and as soon as we showed the picture to our studio in, in Houston, the program director, Cal Jones, and the whole studio group back in Houston said a collective, wow. The hurricane came in, it hit just below Galveston. Everybody else was now sealed out. No other news crew could get into Galveston because, as I had foreseen, the island was sealed off. We were marooned in the Weather Bureau. I had the idea, it was a crazy idea. Well, one of the things I'll do is I'll go out and maybe I'll strap myself to a tree 
and as the hurricane comes in, we'll be right in the middle of the hurricane. But we decided pretty quickly that it wasn't going to work. It was a bad idea. One thing, it was dark as a crow's wing. It was raining, it was hard to get a picture. And besides that, there was the problem of the snakes. Galveston Island is almost at sea level. It's almost flat. But the island has a slight rise in the middle, a slight rise. It turned out that snakes, like people, are looking for higher ground. Keep in mind, folks, this is Texas. Texas has a lot of things, including a lot of snakes. There were snakes everywhere. I'm talking about thousands of snakes. This strapping to tree idea was not going to work. It was, in fact, a damn fool idea from the beginning. All the while this was happening, uh, I had a wife and two young children. They were back home in Houston. As the storm went through, uh, it knocked down a tree in our yard and the tree came right through the bedroom of our house. It sort of crashed through the top of the roof and into the house. And it, of course, startled to say the least, Jean and my two young children. When you're covering a breaking news story and you have live continuous coverage, you have to get zoned. You have to focus on the story. And I was zoned. I regret to say that I did think about my family some, but the story is the only thing that matters. The hurricane came in just below Galveston. Um, it, it was, and I think still stands, as the largest in terms of area hurricane on record. So we covered the hurricane as breaking news. We had an exclusive. We were the only people on the island. We had the scale map superimposed over the radar screen. The very large, the vast evacuation was affected. I'd been told that nobody on television had ever done this kind of thing. I'd also been told that CBS News in New York, they had plugged into our coverage and they had carried a fair amount of our coverage live on the whole CBS network. And so shortly after I got back, I got a call from New York and they wanted to talk to me about a job. Uh, I was stunned. I could have been more surprised if a live giraffe had come loping through the newsroom. And eventually, as a result of that coverage, they hired me to come to CBS News as a correspondent. And so the coverage of Hurricane Carla turned out to be a big break, maybe the biggest break I had as a professional.